Well, you bring up the Big Eight, and we've always we've already uh, touched on the uh, ACC transition when they expanded. Of course, the big talk in college football right now is the Big Ten looking to go 16 teams, and you know, like the Pac-10 and the uh, SEC looking to follow if they do make that move. What's your thoughts on super conferences? Do you like it, or uh, do you think it doesn't need to be in college football? Well, I, I think I think we need to be careful with college football. I think we need to be concerned about making too much emphasis on the on the finances, on the money, and not enough on the student athletes. And that that is a concern. But obviously, we all know football is very expensive. Athletics are very expensive, and to do it the right way, you have to have money. And uh, I think we all understand that. I think this, if the Big Ten adds a team, I don't know, it will be a big big uh, shock. But you know, if they uh, pull in four or five teams, uh, that I think would be a major major shift in college football. And I think. Uh, uh, certainly, I think the SEC would follow suit. I don't know what the Big 12 would do, but uh, it, it, would, it would cause a great deal of movement. And how do I feel about a super conference? I, I don't really have, any, have a feeling one way or the other, only the selfish feeling. And obviously, if we have, uh, we're looking to get in a conference. And I think the more movement you have, maybe give us a better opportunity to get in the league because we're going to be in 2013. We're going to be a Division One football team. You know, you bring up an interesting point, Coach, because you are coaching at a Texas school, and I think that that is attractive to to any uh, conference is possibly looking to expand. Uh, it, it would seem as though um, that what the Big Ten is doing, just as a follow-up to what Dan asked, uh, it seems as though what the Big Ten is doing is trying to force um, sort of a, eventually a playoff system. It was, you know, if you look at the Big Ten, they have winning records against every conference except for the SEC. And I know from just talking the other fan bases on the network and other coaches is that, you know, a lot of people are tired of seeing the SEC teams play for a BCS national championship. Do you think, not just the SEC in general, but specifically, is it, do you think it's gotten to a point to where people are trying to change the system to something that benefits them? Because we all know if the SEC had to go through a playoff on top of a regular season, it would give uh, the Big Ten teams more of an advantage, you would think, just simply because uh, the SEC teams, for example, would be would get worn down uh, on top of a you know regular season having to go through a playoff. Do you think that that's what eventually we're going to lead into in the playoff system? I think eventually that's what, if you get into the super conferences, I think that's what you would have. I think you'd have, let's say, the 16 teams to play for each each to play for the conference championship and then I play two games, play a semifinal game and a final game with, uh, I don't know if you have four or 16 team leagues. I don't know what the magic number is, but I think that could eventually be what you, what you lead into. I think, uh, you're right though, I think the more times that the SEC would have to play one another, I think it'd be, uh, be, uh, pretty, pretty tough on them. I think to stay healthy and keep that edge that you would have to have to play that, that level of competition every week. And that's the thing I, I talked about the ACC and from top to bottom. Well, you know, you, you look at the SEC from top to bottom, I don't think that any of those teams are, that uh, too many people want to play them. I think somebody told me Mississippi State, uh, you know, you don't think Mississippi State right now being a power, but you look at the teams they've beaten in the SEC. So, you know, uh, you play Mississippi State or Vanderbilt or whomever you play, you better, you better be ready to play in the SEC, as we all know. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, uh, in 93 and 94, you were the defensive backs coach at Ohio State and Columbus. Uh, we just mentioned about Barry Sanders, one of the best running backs ever. You also had another great running back up there. Can, where, how do you see Eddie George uh, compared to a Barry Sanders type and also a Frank Gore type? You, you've always been around, you know, great, great running backs. Well, I really have, and I've been very blessed to be around those type of, not only type players, but type people. But Eddie George was an outstanding athlete. Eddie, Eddie was uh, different than anybody from a running back standpoint I've been around because he was so big and physical and also, and also fast. Eddie was probably one of the hardest workers I've ever been around. He was a tremendous worker. You know, you run wind sprints and gassers at the end of practice, he's going to lead the pack. He was that type, had that type of attitude. And I still remember uh, Eddie was a sophomore. We're sitting in meetings talking about Eddie. That he's such a hard worker, such a great young man. We need to get him on the field, but he wasn't one of the top running backs at that time. Well, maybe he played fullback. Maybe he could be a defensive end. He's such a physical, talented athlete. And then uh, three years later, he's uh, re receiving the Heisman Trophy. So he was in the right position and <laughs> certainly a great player. Yeah, remember the 95 Citrus Bowl against Alabama up against Gene Stallings. That was, that was one of the most, uh, most gr uh, one of the greatest games uh, under Gene Stallings for Alabama. So that was a classic when you guys played, uh, played in the Citrus Bowl against the Crimson Tide. 
Well, I remember well, I think, again, Alabama had such a, an outstanding team and uh, just a really, really a good football game. Uh, Coach, uh, obviously you had all this success at Miami, and one of the things that we try to do with our website covering national sports is, you know, profiling great coaches and great programs with tradition. Uh, talk about your time at Columbus and give everybody a little bit of perspective on the on the tradition of Ohio State and how that you don't necessarily have to compare them to Miami, but just give everybody a quick take about uh, you know the tradition in Columbus and how they fit into the college football landscape. Well, that was a great it is a great tradition. That was a great the two years from a short time, but it's a great two years just to be around the Big Ten and, and to play uh, see our team play against uh, Penn State and Joe Paterno and, and Michigan and all those great uh, Big Ten teams and that tradition. I think the thing you see there. I know I don't care in Columbus. Uh, we were played in snow and rain, sleet and hail. There's still going to be a packed, a packed house there. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, all the pomp and circumstance, the the, the dotting of the eye the and, and the script Ohio and all those type of things. It's, it's, it's somewhat college football at its best. And the other part about the Big Ten, too, academics are so strong there, too. And uh, it kind of made it really seem like that's what college football is about, student athlete as well as playing great football. Well, Coach, thank you for uh, taking some time this morning and uh, talking to the network. Well, man, enjoy it, and uh, have a great day. And, hey, keep uh, keep up with us here in San Antonio. This is going to be a good program. We've got a lot of work to do, but, but it's going to be a special place. We enjoyed having you on, Coach, and we'd like a minute with you as we finish the interview off the record. Thanks for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, National Championship Coach Larry Coker. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you, man.